Welcome, Agile friends. My name is Pete Oliver Kruger. And my name is Michael Dougherty. We have a full week of keynotes and sessions planned for you at the 2024 Product Owner Summit. And you can check those all out at productownersummit.org. So we here have our host for our cross-functional track where we have some great talks like Nicole Durer is talking about leading with moral authority. Niels Hioma is teaching us about backlog refinement card game. But right now we are having our hosting, we're hosting a session with our amazing keynote speaker, David J. Bland. Uh, David is going to illustrate his advice on how to construct cross-functional teams to identify, extract, and map risk as a team. He calls it the art of cross-functional discovery or how to do product discovery as a team sport. Welcome, David. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, now I met David, it's got to be like over a decade ago. I was running a, uh, a Lean Startup Academy in the DC area, and you joined me as a guest speaker there. And so you were there to talk about customer discovery and design thinking. And so we've kept in touch since then, and you've done some awesome stuff, including uh, writing a book. Uh, I have a copy of it here, Testing Business Ideas. It's a really, really good book. It not only looks gorgeous inside, but it has a lot of fantastic information inside of it. Definitely recommend going to pick that up. But tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, what do you do and, and how'd you come to get into doing this kind of work? Yeah, well, it's, it's amazing. It's been over 10 years since we first met. Uh, yeah, so I started off in startups. Um, so I went to school for design, ended up in startups, did about 10 or 11 years at startups. And then I realized hey, I think other people can learn from me and mistakes I've made at startups and how to be more iterative and find problems, you know, worth solving. So I made the switch back around 2010, 2011 into coaching and consulting. And that's what I've been doing ever since. A lot of pre-product market fit, you know, testing new ideas uh, with companies all around the world. So I work with some startups. I also work with some big companies on their new stuff. And I don't really focus on a sector. It's just a process. So I work in hardware, software, B2B, B2C, B2G, kind of doesn't matter as long as it's something new that people are worried about. And I kind of teach them a process to apply to it. So why this though? Like, I imagine you could have done a lot of different things with your careers. Like, why, why did you get into this particular area or the particular talk? But like, what, what grabbed you about this? Oh, well, I was, you know, at these startups, I was kind of introduced to Agile and we were iteratively delivering things almost constantly to production. But I often wondered, are we delivering anything that matters? <laughs> are we delivering the right thing? <laughs> it was a lot of uh, build it right, but not are we building the right thing? And, and so I just kind of bit pulled further and further upstream into, hey, what kind of problem are we solving? And can we use an iterative approach here to better understand what we're going to deliver? And so it was about the time the third startup was imploding that I felt like, you know, maybe other people have this same urge or the same void with regards to, yeah, I'm working in an agile way, but is it having an impact on the real person using it at the other end? And so I realized, yeah, there are people that often are frustrated by that and they want to process and they want to evangelize it. So. I kind of just got pulled into it because I lived it at startups and I felt as if other people could benefit from, you know, a process that would help even make Agile better if we could work on the right thing in addition to the right, <laughs> deliver it the right way. Yeah, I think that's a very common kind of thing. You know, I know I start off in developments and then I just got getting pulled forward and for, more further forward because, you know, things would show up at your desk and you're like, why? Why am I getting this? You know, why are we being asked to do this? And I was like, I want to go find out. I want to go understand. I want to go like, uh, you know, and you, as you do that, you get closer and closer and closer to the customers. Uh, and yeah, it completely changes the way you see the world, I think. I find that once I started thinking this way, it really opened my mind to, hey, it, it's almost like scientific method applied to business in a way. You're saying, what's our riskiest assumption, let's run an experiment, go find out and, and use that to learn. And so if that can help inform your delivery, by all means, you know, uh, run with that as well. So um, it's really, yeah, a risk reduction machine is what often we're called there is that agile is all about. And when you do design thinking about placing small bets and stop doing the big bets and uh, product owners uh, definitely around the world could take heed to that. 
Um, it, uh, we're not into doing uh, gambling of any sort here. If you want to do that, go ahead and do DraftKings or um, any of the other gambling applications out there. <laughs> but that's not the best thing to try with product development. So um, with that, uh, what, what would you say uh, is the definition of design thinking in your mind, David? Oh, that's a good one. There's so many definitions. You know, I, I often view it more as a mindset than anything else. So if you have a design thinking mindset, one, it's iterative, right? It's not a linear uh, kind of mindset. It's, it's a very iterative. You're always coming back and questioning things. And also it's rooted in um, users. It, it's user-centered design. It's about what kind of problems do people experience? And can I iterate through that and very deeply understand it and have empathy and therefore that should inform the way I solve that and that should inform my solution. So I try to stay away from the kind of dogmatic here with all the practices and here are all the handoffs and everything that I, I view it much more as a mindset and something you're doing iteratively, but you're it's deep cus customer empathy and you're discovering real problems to solve before jumping to a solution right away. But why do I have to care about that? I mean, isn't the product decided by the technology? You know, it's like, there's only certain things that you can do with the technology. So, like, if, if you were to try to win somebody over to this idea, like, why is it important for them to, to, to do that, to really put that design at the center of the focus or put the people at the center of the focus when they have to deal with all these other limitations anyway? Yeah, it really, I think the limitations can be good in the sense that it's going to spur your creativity of what can I do within these constraints. So if you look at any good creative process, they usually have constraints. You can go all the way back to Bugs Bunny and or you do like Roadrunner and you can see like there are constraints around those cartoons and that's why they were so creative about their solutions to things. And so when you think about, you know, what I'm working with, I have constraints within my technology, but ultimately I need some kind of value proposition from that. Like what can I do with that to provide value to people? And how do I do that and also usually make money for the company in some way, right? It might not even be directly, but this idea of I, I need some kind of user pain or some kind of job they're trying to do or some kind of gain they're trying to experience. I, I need to have a technology that can create a value proposition that fits with some of that because you want an overlap between what the customers need and what the company is trying to achieve. And so I do think we have to be careful blindly following customer demands, because if they don't align to where we're going as a company, then those solutions probably aren't going to sustain after all anyway. And so I do think we, we, sometimes we call it high value jobs, but this idea of here's what the customer is experiencing and what, they, what their needs are, and here's 